Okay, someone wants to know how I do this, so um, these are the little daking boards. <coughs> uh, I've already cooked one side, put the chip on. Uh, I need to put components on the other side, so get my nice little uh, stencil out. And the real trick here is the pain in the arse of lining this up. Oh, that's close. Okay, let me put my glasses on. Try and get it lined up nicely. Actually, before I line it up, I'm going to put some uh, solder paste on a bit of a card. Like that. Now I'm going to line it up. And it's really a pain in the ass with these tiny boards because they move around like God knows what. Pretty sure last time I stuck them down. So I might have to do the same this time. Okay. I should stop the bugger moving. Right. Normally it's a little bit easier because you have just the bare board, you don't have the chip on the other side. Uh, which means it, you can put some other boards around it and just have it nice and fixed. But anyway, so. Right, there we go. Check, solder paste on all the white pads. Good. I'm doing two of these. Okay, so get that back out of the way. Let's do this one as well. Now, of course, normally you'd set up some sort of proper jig for this, but I don't have a jig. Okay. That looks good. Right, so, at this point I'm just going to clean my stencil up. Um, so it's not got solder paste in it for next time. And put the remaining paste back in the jar. This um, chip quick seems to be good. Clean up my bit of card. And clean up my bit of lolly pop stick. Right, so the next stage is components. So let's get these on here. Okay, so these two need doing, and we have some tweezers, and I'm going to put some components on. So I've got this on my screen, and it shows me where all the components go, which components, what values, and where they go, which makes life nice and easy. I can select a component, and it highlights where it goes. So I'm using that as a guide. Okay, I'll start with the capacitors. And it would appear I need a 10 nanofarad capacitor. So, 10 nanofarad. Two of them out here. And two 10 nanofarad capacitors. And there you go. I need to make sure I'm doing this the same way up as I've got it on screen. Otherwise, I can't find anything. Very difficult. So, one 10 nanofarad there. And. One there. I'm actually seriously thinking of sticking this down again. Normally the bolts are bigger, normally they stay put, normally they don't have a component on the back. So I think sticking it down. The 
this gecko tape is quite good for it. It's very sticky, but it does come off, which is I've used stuff before that's left muck all over the components, which has been a pain in the ass. Okay, next component. 100 nanofarads. Oh shit, I've got three. Why well, have I got three capacitors? See, this is half the problem. I've now got three capacitors. I thought I'd only picked up two, so one could be from the other one, and measuring these things is a bugger. So I'm actually going to scrap those, start again with two capacitors. There's one. Two capacitors. Oh, that fudge brownie collapsed because it wasn't cooked in the middle. Okay. Do you need white cones at all? Hang on. Now doing two boards or more at once is really quite a time saver because you only have to get the components out and put them all in the same place. It's just a lot simpler. Right, next one, a 2.2 microfarad, a big one. Given that all my boards have exactly the same power supplies on them, I'm very used to uh, this exact sequence of the capacitors. Uh, next is a 10 microfarad, I'm sure. Yes, it is. Oops, it went flying, but don't have an extra one, so I'm pretty sure this is right. It's a lot easier with resistors because you can read the value on resistors. And next is 100 nanofarad down there. Check I've read that one. Yeah, 100 nanofarad. This should be the last of the resistors. Okay. And it sticks to your tweezers if you're not careful. If you get any solder paste on the tweezers, everything sticks to them. So 100 nanofarad is down here. Okay. Okay. That's all the capacitors. Next we have some resistors. Nice little box of resistors. Okay. 680 ohms. I don't, I don't know about you, but I always try and put the resistors the right way up so the label's on the top so you can read them. Of course, there's no actual need to do that, but I do prefer to do it, which means you have to turn them over, which is a pain in the neck. But that's my choice. Right, next is. 2K. Let's pick up more resistors than I need. Okay, 2K is. These are for the RGB. All of which use slightly different voltages, a slightly different current, and to get even vaguely like the same colours, same brightness. They need completely different resistors. Right, next is 220 ohm. Oh, for heaven's sake. To say that fiddly is an understatement. One, two, three, two hundred and twenty ohm. Yeah, the sound on this is going to be crap because I haven't muted dings on the computer. I didn't tell my wife not to shout at me up the stairs. The camera's focus is making a noise. But it is just a quick demo. Right, next. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. Let's down there. These little pots uh, are really quite good for 
not losing all your chips everywhere. You can just take them off the strip as you go, but it's actually really easy to strip a whole load into a little pot. Actually strip them into the, into the big plastic box and then pour it into the pot because I'm trying to get them all in a little pot is a nightmare. But you end up a lot better. Right, so what's next? Uh, this depends on the regulator, but in this case it's 100k. So basically, um, if I'm using a fixed regulator, 3.3 volts, then these are no fit in the zero ohm. But if I'm using a variable one, as I am, then I've now got sort of based all of the thing. If I'm using a variable one, then it needs the correct resistor to set 3.3 volts. This is also rather annoyingly a potential divide, so you want the tires you can get away with so you minimise the current draw. Right, 30k. Two of these. And this gives us the correct reference for 3.3 volts. If you're not careful, you move the components. Unless I do hold my breath while I'm doing that. Right, next. Right, this is where the power supply components come in, so that's the resistors done. Very straightforward, these huge high comparison inductors. Whoops, one too many. Let's go on. Very straightforward. Next. Oh, no, did I get? Okay, RGB. Let's do an RGB. Now these aren't decanted, so they're, they're just on a strip. And it's the start of a new strip, just to be awkward. How it is playing in the neck. Two RGB LEDs. Now, RGB LEDs are a pain. They do have a dot, but the dot's not actually pin one as far as I know. Uh, however, I believe a little corner marked on my board so I can go around. The annoying thing is when I first did these, I got the wrong around and I got the wrong template, which meant some of the colours worked. A complete and utter fluke. Right, so we're nearly there. Next, we need a nice diode for the power supply. So I've got a couple of uh, shocky diodes. Too many. And of course, just like the LED, components like this matter which way around they are. So there's a nice little line on my silk screen to tell me which way around to put it. Although, as I say, I've done so many of these power supplies, I'd be very surprised if I got it wrong. And finally, double check. Oh, yeah, I've done that. Finally, the regulator. As I said, we're using the variable regulator rather than the uh, um, fixed 3.3 volt, largely because component shortages, the variable regulator was actually available from China, whereas nobody had the 3.3 volts. So, the original design was fixed regulator. This now has the resistors to allow me to use either. So this regulator goes in here. And now quick visual check, there's still another component. And it is a PMF 250XNEX, which I'm pretty sure I've got somewhere up here. PMF 250XNEX. Good. Uh, this is because the Dakin's expecting, well, they're uh, providing 5 volt signals and we're all 2.3 volts. So this is just a tiny little FET to uh, allow the incoming 5 volt signal to uh, switch the 3 volt input cleanly without blowing anything up. It actually works if you shove 5 volts into it, but it's not recommended. 
And of course all of this is on an anti-static mount which I'm in contact with all the time. It's earthed. Okay, that one will not go straight. Let's try it again. Let's make these little effects are a pain. Okay. Now, um, need to just check everything straight because it's easy to knock it as you're going. And um, also, things don't have to be quite spot on because the surface tension and the solder paste suck it onto the pads uh, with the solder resist nothing. So basically, at this stage, we now put it in the oven. Now, I've already done one side, as I said. Now this is going to be fun. I'm going to take this off and they'll all go flying, okay. Looks good. That goes in the oven. Right, we'll see what it looks like when it comes out the oven. So, um, it's cooking in the oven, should be finished in a moment. And uh, then we can have a look at how it's come out. Suitably noisy. Right, come out, take those out. Turn off the noisy oven. Okay, so, we can see. Again, you need to do a bit of a visual inspection because it's possible for things to tombstone where they turn up on end. But you should be able to see that these have all nicely soldered in place, just as we want. Now, there's a manual component on this board, which is a four-pin header like this, uh, which is uh, there's actually a five-pin plug of only four wires that goes on this. So we just need to. Solder these, which is nice and easy. A little bit of solder. Yeah, you need to get the first pin done squarely and make sure it's all neat and tidy before you do the others because trying to straighten it after you've done more than one pin is of course almost impossible. Actually, in order to fit in the case nicely, I chop the back off these pins. Cover your eyes while you do this. Okay, so that's two baking boards which I will now test and configure, all ready to go. But that gives you an idea of what's involved in um, solder paste and soldering some boards. And it looks like they're both working fine. So the boards are finally completely made. And as you can see, we've got this five pin header on the bottom there that's got no contacts on, and the four pin one that goes to the five pin plug on the actual daking. And they need flashing, and for this we use one of these. This is my Shelly Tasmatizer, six pin and five pin headers for different types of Shelly, and it basically um, does the power and serial and reset uh, straight on USB, so it makes it very easy to just run uh, the IDF tool to flash things. So uh, basically we, we fit this on a slightly longer bit of USB cable, hang on. We fit this onto the, uh, the programming header. Now you'll notice it's carefully con contrived to avoid the, uh, the four pins so it can actually go between. So that's, and I hold it in place because there's no, you know, it's just loose contacts. And if I tell it to actually flash it, there we go, flashing, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 
90, 100% flushed, and it should reset itself nicely. Good, it's reset. Oh, and we've got a flashing LED, which is just what we want. That shows it's all working and ready.